if you like it, if you love it, if you want some kind of memento of Writer's Week, please make sure to check out the Writer's Week store. It is open through this Friday at midnight, which means Friday night when you're sitting at home, curled up, reading a nice book, you can get on there and order some gear. It's writersweekfhs.com. It's really, really easy to navigate. And I'm sure your parents would love to buy you some school I wear. Wear it anytime you want. You don't have to just wear it during Writers Week. Uh, you know, we, we come up here, we give you some obligatory thank yous, but I think one of the biggest should always go to our rock star tech crew. Please give them some love. Again, if you have parents that are boosters, Please go home and thank them at least 205 times, maybe 211. Um, because without our boosters, a lot of what you see in front of you and all the pros that come up here, they're probably not coming. So please make sure you thank them as well. With that being said, please give a warm round of applause for our leadoff hitter, Larry Dean. Salutations, everyone. I'm Larry Mead. And I'd like to quickly extend a spotlight to some seniors. Kate Petrie, Scott McCoppin, Allison Guile, Nikhil Beatty, Katie Haggett, Colin Schroeder, Kathleen McManus, Brian Rosenwinkel, Rose Gallo, Luke Madden, Angie Cornwell, Ben Matthew, Christine Latourette, and Lauren Berryhill. And now some faculty members as well. Mrs. Denhart, Ms. Quinn, Mrs. Klinger, Ms. Burdick, Mr. Hogreef, Mrs. Adamski, and Mrs. Kirby. Now, my poem is titled, The F Word. Yes, it's a word you all heard. And that, of course, being, fear. No, not that other word, oh dear. Fear is the chain that we all do wear the weight of which can be quite tough to bear. Our brains always make and wear them link by link, and as they grow, they threaten to make us shrink. The further they stretch, yard by yard, they're bound to make us emotionally scarred. Perhaps once you messed up having to give a speech, and from now on, doing it again would almost certainly make you screech. Almost everyone would definitely not wish to die, so some may evade water for being high in the sky. Fear is also what keeps us unmotivated, quiet, and shy. We don't want to be negatively judged, so we just stand by. For a long time, I isolated myself from others whenever I could. I feared potential hostility and was always in a bad mood. No one seemed to motivate me then, but now it's better. I like to write, act, and watch all sorts of theater. Now, I certainly could not deny the fears I felt writing this. Because sometimes I fear negativity and forget the pure bliss. When I'm up here, I fear messing up the delivery of my content. But the passion, due to this, fuels me, and it keeps me content. These are only the basic phobias we do brainstorm. But beware, for that fear takes on infinite forms. Do you know why discrimination occurs? People simply want what they always prefer. Anyone different to them cannot be tolerated. So they make these different people's lives ill-fated. Humans treat each other just because they are of a different gender. Races treat each other racist, so they treat each other without tender. Sexism and racism are most certainly not okay. They censor, harass, and hold people at bay. And yet people perpetuate these inexcusable crimes by forcing their fears down like sour limes. Anything they feel threatens them must be put down. <coughs> and so, they look upon all their perceived threats with a frown. All this happens since people choose to be controlled by their fears instead of controlling their fears as a whole. People of a different gender, religion, sexual orientation, or race, they are not naturally hostile. So please, give them the space. If I had to summarize the message I wish to spread, it's to never, never, never let fear rule your life until you're dead. Please, oh please, how many pleases will it take? All I ask is to overcome your fears, for goodness sake. There are plenty of people who will accept you for who you are. If you are these, if you are these people, then 
that is what makes you a shining star.
Spinning around my bedroom floor that is covered in yesterday's clothes, I don't miss a beat to the song. I grab the hand of my phantom prince and we continue our dance. Our steps synchronized, knowing we've done this dance a hundred times. He spins me around the room and pulls me into his arms. The song reaches its last couple notes and I open my eyes. I bow myself in the mirror as reality hits me, but again, I was dancing alone. I let myself fall back into the loneliness of my bed. He's here, I hear my dad yell from the front door. I take one last look in the mirror, fix the smear smearing mascara, and wipe away the tears. My grandma made sure that my night was perfect by not wasting any money when it came to my hair and makeup. I walk down the stairs to see a stranger. This wasn't the person I was supposed to who was supposed to take me. In fact, it was the last person I would have chosen. But we were both going alone in the same group to prom and it only made sense that our friends would set us up. I grab onto his arm and he helps me walk over to my car. We make it through pictures in the car ride with awkward small talk and arrive at the prom while we're receiving strange looks from the people around us. No one expected us to arrive together, two people from completely different worlds, but I didn't care. My mind was lingering more on when I got to go home. When it was time to dance, everyone stood up from the table and headed to the dance floor, except me. I watched as my date was pulled away by two girls to dance with him. As I sat down, I began to text my sister to pick me up. Come dance with me. I open my eyes and see a hand reaching out to me. I look up and see the mystery man who took me to the dance. Before I even have the chance to say no, he grabs my hand and began walking. As soon as I step on the dance floor, I saw him come. Sweet dreams till sunbeams find you. Sweet dreams that leave all worries behind you. But in your dreams, whatever they be, dream a little dream of me. The song fills me with an instant sense of relief, and I don't even realize that my date is beginning our dance. I was definitely not ready for a typical high school slow dance, and that's not what I got. He pulled me in and whispered to me, trust me, spin out. I gently grabbed his hand and let my body drift into the empty space of the floor. He twisted me back in and held me tightly in his arms. As the song took over the room, it seemed that we had also. People began to stop and stare as he dipped me down and lifted me into the air. And that is where I spent the rest of my night. My hand in his and my other on the shoulder of my unexpected prince. Come in, he says, opening the door to me. Since prom, me and him have never left each other's side. I told myself not to put my trust in somebody again, but it's so hard not to when it comes to him. He picks me up when I'm down, and he makes it his daily goal to make me smile. He knows the path my life has been on and accepts me for it. <coughs> that overwhelming feeling of loneliness that I used to feel is filled by a big-hearted companion. But reality always finds its way back into a perfect world, and I begin finding that build up of stress again. He starts lighting candles around the basement and grabs my phone from my pocket. He begins scrolling through my phone, trying to find something. I look up yet again to see him with his hand stretched out towards me, but this time he doesn't need to ask. The basement turns into a dance floor as the music begins to fill up the empty corners. I take a deep breath and fall into his arms. Say nighty night and kiss me. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me while I'm all alone and blue as can be. Dream a little dream of me. attractive and skinnier body? Do they not notice the common courtesies anymore? 
or the little things we as humans do in our lives, none of us believe it. Why should we notice something if they don't? Look at all the pictured moments. Each has one detail that's unforgettable to you. Yet, would they ever see it? Would they ever understand the pain you have embraced or the joy that someone has overwhelmed you with? Every day passes by in one of those dust infested buildings and nobody ever seems to notice you or your surroundings anymore. They only seem to notice the lit up screens within their hands, the highs surrounding their already clogged ears. It's not that they don't do it anymore. It has more to do with the generation they live in. Ideas of no longer having to talk in person or be outside and exercise. There's no longer a motivation of grasp, grasping the leaves or running your fingers along the water because you can just use the screen to visualize the dream of it. But what's a dream compared to real life? No matter how hard you try, these little things will never be noticed. They will seem useless and small, weak and quiet, or even scarce and solemn. But until the brown wooden door is opened towards the right direction and those patterned carpets have reason to smile up, there's never going to be light for those things. People are the creators of what we do they have emotions and perspectives and opinions, and they will never stop attempting to achieve something better. There's always a big, bigger picture. It's broad, but making it vivid and more detailed can only ensure a more creative and wonderful picture that everyone can see the things, the things that went unnoticed before, before they were behind the brown wooden doors. Agencies. How about this weather, huh? I 
gave a sarcastic little smile and started to reach for a weapon. Oh, sweetheart, do you really want to do this here, now? He gestured to the courtyard full of students and the windows of the building next to us. I slowly brought my hand away from my pack. Good girl. Now, about this whole destroying each other thing, why don't we go discuss over some coffee? My treat. It was hard to tell if he was really committed to making stupid jokes or if he was actually being serious. Unable to formulate words, a scoff was all that escaped my lips. No, really. Listen, Cupcake, neither one of us is going to pull a gun in public. If one of us is doomed anyway, I see no harm. I ran the thoughts through my head, finally saying, all right, after coffee, we are free to get right back to killing each other, though, OK? It was definitely a decision against my better judgment. But if anything, he might give me some insight on his weakness. Plus, I was intrigued. His voice and actions seemed so familiar. We walked to a Starbucks. I swore I could almost see a hint of recognition in the barista's face when he saw the man, but he tried to hide it. He ordered a mocha, and I got a black coffee. The barista looked at him with a hint of question, met by the slightest raise of his eyebrows. I pretended not to notice. I eyed my drink carefully as it was made, but the barista blocked my view. When he gave it to me, I took the tiniest sip, just enough to confirm my suspicions, smiled, and thanked him. We sat down and made agonizing small talk while he made multiple references to my coffee. I pretended to drink it for the entirety of our dull conversation, each time raising the cup a little more until it was convincing that I had drunk it all and I threw away the full cup. A hint of a smirk was barely visible on his face, but I saw it. I acted loopier and loopier until I feigned blacking out and he dragged me outside. His car was very close by, so stuffing me into it didn't draw much attention. I was in the back seat, along with his duffel. While he was distracted driving, I took what I could from it without making much noise and stuffed it in my clothes. He spoke to someone on the phone, and I suddenly realized where I knew his mannerisms from, and I couldn't help but break cover. In one swooping motion, I drew my gun and pressed it against his temple. Drive us to the police station right now, or I pull the trigger, I yelled. I barely recognized my own voice. Oh, sweetheart, I don't think so, he laughed. Plus, what are they going to do? They didn't help you last time. I didn't have a good view of his face, but I could just hear him sneering. How dare he, after what he did. I said police station, now. I'm afraid that's not going to happen. Then you're going to die. Oh, please, as if you even have the... A bang echoed in my mind long after it echoed throughout the car. He slumped over. Take that, you son of a bitch. I opened the door and rolled out of the car, watching it crash full on with a lamppost in the crisp autumn afternoon. so different. I was a whole foot and a half taller than her. She came from a culture all the way across the world. She was a brilliant student and I wasn't too far from average. We were absolutely indivisible. I thought that it was the perfect friendship. My height at the time was just reaching 6'2", but that was no representative of my, the height of my mind. Creeping upon me like a teenager playing Ding Dong Ditch, she wanted more than just a friendship. She eyed me more as in a lore than a particularity. And the voice behind her motive told me that there wasn't a deceleration in this dragon. 
there was a candle being slowly blown out for the reason that I, bewildered as there were in another, did not desire such arrangements. News came around that she would still want to remain friends with someone who had essentially friend, essentially friend zoned her. And now you're probably thinking, Devin, you douche, how could you do that? But the situation was more complex than you could imagine. Instability ran through me. She was pulled away from me with every step she took towards me because I didn't want what she did want. She had depression. She was suicidal. She cut her wrists. She got drunk. She became sour. Bitter like dill. What she vowed to never give up, she was trying to sever from her life now. She would get drunk and text me with distorted texts saying that I was the reason why she wanted a drink. She wanted to be my friend, but she was trying to hate me for what I had done. What are you supposed to do when your best friend tells you that you're the reason why they want to die, and then two hours later say that you're the reason why they want to live? Are you a killer or a savior? How do you act when they tell you that they're not going to make it through December, or living in fear every single hour because you don't know if that last goodbye is the last one you'll ever say to them? The crowd of a million shadows drifted upon my path, and depressed as other, I began to contemplate if she was right. Am I really the awful person she creates of me? My own naivety guided me around the wrong map. What was I fighting for? Myself? It was more the cowering it was from wind of unstoppable force. Self-confidence was torn out of my body because here she was, my, my best friend, calling me a sociopath and the worst human being. I could only conclude that she was right. After all, she knows me like any other body out there. We don't talk anymore, it's safe to say. Nothing ended how I wanted it to, but it's not something that gets to be taken to heart. She was my best friend, and I wish she could have still been my friend. I couldn't hold on long enough before we were both falling. I could never blame her for the events that portrayed. I tried to take an unrelenting force into my own hands. I didn't understand that I needed to hang up the cape. And that's something that you have to understand. There is so much that you can do, but there's only so much. It's not giving up at all. The tears don't need to hit the floor any longer. Please understand the imperfections of man. I wanted to single-handedly cure her and make everything okay, but I couldn't, and that is okay. She needed help, and I couldn't give it to her. So please, if you suffer from any mental illness, get help, because we all care about you, even if you feel the opposite. God's not dead, but being in such a friendship made her feel worse and worse. We were putting together a puzzle with half the pieces missing. Our friendship was beyond any remediation, and so any attempts to fix it just purged us both further down into sadness. We had so many good memories, and those are the things that I will hold closest to me. Best friends, they're the greatest gift of all. Best friends will love you, hate you, and help you. Every experience that you go through with them will be a growth in your life. Park. 
Slowly, not speeding, head swaying, Hannah Montana's I Wanna Know You was playing. Two seconds. Claire was nearly out of stock when it went black. Dark, dark, dark black for only two short seconds. Two seconds of the many seconds of my year. My eyes opened to be staring in the air bath. I smelled burnt rubber and peered down at my shaking hands. We were hit from the back and had collided into the car in front of us. Claire and I stared at each other in shock. We're in a car accident, screamed in my head. It was not our fault. For two seconds, the lady behind us wasn't paying attention. My appetite was gone, replaced with fear and tension. As we looked behind us at the destroyed car, the tears began and didn't cease. Because of our crash, Crenton Road was shut down by police. We held on to each other's hands, our hearts beating incredibly fast, but we were together. I don't know what that happened for. Sometimes I wish I had stayed home, but I realized I shouldn't be afraid, but more aware. Before this crash, I never truly knew what it was like to lose my life or my best friends. Why us? We walked away with only headaches from the impact against the headrest. Was it a test? This is the day I remember most. Maybe when I'm older, I'll associate 2016 with a car crash. Or maybe not. But all I know, if I know anything, is that I learned you can never see what's coming next. So tell your parents you love them, even if you left your room a mess. And hug your pet, or smile at that teacher you like best. Because I know I did those things after what happened on that day I remember most. Those two seconds. Enjoy every moment, good and bad, of your day, week, month, or year. Because at this moment, this one second, everything you love and everyone you cherish is here. Right here. Thank you. left, but before we get to a kind of a second round, if you give them one big round of applause. And Sophia has one more thing that she may share with you. Do you want her to come back up? They love you. While she's getting it ready, let me remind you, Writer's Week here, if you're looking around, and you're like, I want something like that, feel free to hit up writersweekfhs.com by Friday night at midnight. She's still looking. Shout us out! <laughs> Shout out to my first and second hour American <laughs> Studies class. Yes. It's funny, all week long, there have been more shout outs this year than ever in the past. And every single time when someone comes up here, I'm like, I wonder what the shout out will be this hour. Best friend, girlfriend, ex, parents, which by the way, there are a ton of parents standing here. Nobody gave a shout out to their parents today. So shout out to the parents that came. She found it. Irrelevant, a blob of regret and embarrassment. 
past slip-ups easily seen through its thin paint that's barely a screen. Perfection is an illusion, an eraser is a much better solution. Pencils are safe, mistakes are okay. Do not allow pressure to change your perception. Lead beats ink. With the safety blanket of an eraser, your worries will surely shrink. Once the right is picked, there's only one thing left to decide. College rules or why. Thank you. I guess we can go to some questions. Just a real quick thing, I guess, for our crowd, right? Because we do, we have an incredible students here that accept all of our writers. It was cool to hear Larry start off by dropping the F-bomb. Well done, Larry. Um, but immediately what followed Larry was a group of seven, you're eight, Larry, writers that showed a lot of courage coming up here and sharing some very personal and intimate stories with you. I hope you appreciate that and recognize just how fortunate you are to have a place and then peers that will share that with you. It's pretty neat. So one more big round of applause for our panel. <laughs> While you're thinking of a question, I had one that came to me, so I'm going to ask first. What should they be reading right now? Could be anything. Lyrics, poets, an author that you love, specifically novels, nonfiction, fiction, a shampoo bottle, whatever. Um, well, one of my favorite books is the book Legend by Marie Lu. If you haven't read it, check it out. Uh, I've been reading the Lunar Chronicles lately. They're great. I've been reading uh, Catch-22. It's a really good book. Um, this is Ings class. You should all be reading your play for the research paper. 